So following our steps related to intake, then coagulation and flocculation, and then sedimentation, the water on the surface of our sedimentation basins is relatively clear, but it still has some impurities in it that haven't been taken out. And that's where filtration comes in. And there's a variety of different types of filter media that are out there. And one of them is this style that's very common in a conventional water plant. So filtration removes the approximately 5% of re remaining suspended particles. And often it involves moving the particles by putting it through some sort of porous material. Sometimes it's uh, manufactured filters, but in many cases it's traditional bank filtration, passing the water through a layer of porous material. So some of the things that may make up the porous material could include sand, coal grains, garnet, or some mixture of sand, coal, and garnet. The Richmond drinking water plant, you can see here, we've got the heavier stones, smaller stones and gravel, sand, and then charcoal, anthracite. And many people with aquariums know that charcoal filters are fairly common. So our water goes through this kind of system through filtration. And they have a variety of filters that are operational at any point in time. You can see back here, this is one of the instruments that monitors the amount of head pressure, the amount of weight of water that has to go on top of that filter to push it through. And this is just a tube showing you what a large rectangular bin, and there are several of them behind the windows here, and there's more of them throughout the water plant. They've grown as the water plants had to grow to meet the needs of the city of Richmond's growth. So the water actually builds up on top of this and the amount of weight on top of it pushes the water through it. That amount of weight is called the head pressure. And the more head that is required to push the water through means that you're going to have potentially lower quality water coming out. So there's an optimal amount of head to have on here. If it takes more head pressure to push the water through, it means a lot of these pores are starting to get filled up. So once the head pressure gets too high or the turbidity gets higher than what the water plant would like, they can take the filter offline and then backwash it and push all the water out that's got all the sludge, muddy material and run it out of the water plant. And the water plant, believe it or not, actually has an NPDES permit for that water that's got a lot of uh, sludge in it that then goes to sludge ponds and they remove the sludge, but the water that comes out of the sludge pond has a permit. So that is one method. So you saw here, this is, this is bank filtration. Another method is slow sand filtration, slow sand filtration. In some communities that have a lot of flat land, they may use it. It's 30 times slower than that bank filtration method. It is effective, doesn't require energy or power as much. It can be more economical to operate, but you have to have large amounts of land area and you have to scrape the surface. This is an example. You can see over here the sedimentation basin, but here's an example of what would be required to do slow sand filtration. It takes a long time for the water to go through it. This one, and possibly this one, is being actively used where clear water from the sedimentation basin is going on top of this sand. Over time, it'll find its way through the sand into an underground clear well where the water will be clear and then it's ready to be disinfected. This one is one that's ready to be used and this is one that has been used that's drying out and you can see the muddiness of it. That muddiness will have to be removed using equipment or some other method. So it requires having to do some sort of manual labor to remove, there's no backwash for a slow sand filter. All right, so that's slow sand filtration. Other methods like we've talked about here in Richmond is the more rapid filtration. So you can see a picture here 
Also some you know, rapid or bank filtration. There's a bank of filters that are used. After we've filtered the water, it's relatively clear and then it's ready to be used for disinfection. And here are just some of the disinfectants that can be used. And we'll talk about the disinfectants in a future video. So let's review really quickly. One question here, what are the three major types of filter media used in water filtration at water plants? Hopefully you would pick the answers anthracite or coal grains, right? Sand and gravel. Another one that's occasionally used is garnet. Uh, there was one time diatomaceous earth made from diatoms. They were all used at different times. So that's enough on filtration.